Let's continue our review of pressure control valves. And let's take a look at the one that's in front of us here, the sequence valve. So the sequence valve is a valve that we would use a single work port of a directional control valve. And that would come into here. So let's say work port A of our directional control valve would send oil into this passage right here. That would then allow it to travel all the way through the spool to the other side. As it travels to the other side, it's going to go, let's say, to a single cylinder. So it extends the cylinder. Then the point of a sequence valve is that it sends to this cylinder first, and then using the single actuation of a directional control valve will do two things. It'll just do it in order. So it's a really a priority uh, valve. It says do this thing first and then do that thing. So it does that by pressure. So let's say it sends the oil from directional control port A into this port right here, goes to the cylinder until it dead ends. When it dead ends, the pressure builds up from the directional control valve, comes down through this little passageway right here, down to this bottom side of the poppet, and that little sealed poppet with the labyrinth seals there, that little poppet is then gonna create enough force to cause this piston to lift. Now, when this little major poppet or the larger poppet inside the spool, the spool that's inside the valve, really, get the terms right, when that spool lifts up, what ends up happening is we will lift up far enough because the pressure is built up. It's at the dead end of the cylinder on this side. Pressure builds up enough to lift up this spool and actually connect that same work port A to an additional cylinder right here. And then that additional cylinder would be able to extend out until it bottoms out and or carries a load. And then both of those pressures, as they extend, what happens is that they would equal pressure to both of those cylinders. It just sends to this cylinder first and then to this cylinder. But both of those pressures, because it'll just be an open cavity here, both of those cylinders will be connected in parallel. The pressure will be equal and then what will happen is that whatever the system pressure is, so if we use that same system pressure we did in our relief valves, that 3,000 PSI will eventually be able to get to both of the cylinders. The point of the sequence valve is not to control the pressure so much as to say which one moves first. Now, a thing to be aware of in our sequence valve here is because we have high pressure oil in this port and in this port and eventually in this port, we don't actually have any low pressure ports. And so one thing we need, because this spool will see some leakage, we'll know that leakage will come up into this spring cavity right here. And because we don't have a low pressure port in the main part of the body, we actually need to provide it right here. You can see this little passage right there. We actually need to provide it an external drain. And so this line actually right here needs to be connected back to tank as an external drain. If that's not there, any leakage in the spool will actually get into the spring cavity and it'll hold, it'll be pressure plus spring, holding this spool, sending only the pressure to one function and you will not get the use of the second function. So one thing we also need to see right here is that this sequence valve is adjustable and the adjustability you're changing using this lock nut and the adjusting screw, what you're actually changing is the pressure at which the second function starts. So we have the first function's always gonna work first, and then you're setting the pressure at which the second function works at. So if you wanted to squeeze, let's say, the cylinder uh, at 1,000 PSI before you started another thing moving, that'd be great, but you want both of them to reach full system pressure, then this is the ideal system to use. If you want to control the order at which things happen and then also want to reduce the pressure in this passage, you would have to add in addition to this valve a pressure reducing valve. So it wouldn't inherently do that. It really only works to set the order in which the functions happen. If you want to set the maximum pressure for one function and not the other, you would have needed a reducing valve. And if you want to set the maximum pressure for both of these functions, you would need to set that at the relief valve.